So let's take a look at gravitational potential. Gravitational potential of a point is defined as the work done required to move a unit mass from infinity to that point concerned by an external force. So using the definitions, we can now work out a mathematical expression for it. So we can consider the gravitational field strength graph versus the R graph. In this case, the gravitational field strength is the same as the gravitational attraction force since the mass, since we're referring to per unit mass. So in this case, the shaded area under the block is in actual fact the work done. As we can pictorially visualize that as the force is being applied in this direction, the displacement is also moved in this direction. So in this case, the force is now minus gm over r squared, given that a small m is one kg, and the displacement is also negative. Both of them are pointing in this direction, which is opposite to the convention where r is positive. So with that, we can do an integration because we need to sum up all the work done that is done in incrementally, in incrementally moving this object to this point. So by doing the integration, we can arrive at the expression here. So this is the formula that you use for gravitational potential. And if you multiply by the small m, that will be the formula for gravitational potential energy. And finally, to wrap it up, the area under the graph, the modulus of the area under the graph is actually the work done. Let's now take a look at how gravitational potential relates to the gravitational field strength. We can assume that a mass of m equal to 1 kg, all right, move over a very small distance of delta r. And okay, move over a small distance of delta r as a consequence of the gravitational attraction force. So the work that's done by the system will be Fg multiplied by negative delta r because the direction of delta r is opposite to that of Fg. And that will be equal to the change in terms of your gravitational potential. And from there, we can have this uh, equation. From there, we can have this formula. From this expression, we can also work out, we can also relate the, the gravitational field strength versus the gravitational potential. This is a very important formula that you could use. Say, for example, in the case whereby if I have two identical objects, in the two identical objects, I can calculate and work out the potential, the gravitational potential for each of the points in between them. And since both of them are negative in value and they are both scalars, we just aggregate them. So if we aggregate them, this is the graph that you will get. So by knowing the graph of the net gravitational potential between these two bodies, we are able now to derive, we are able now to work out the gravitational potential using this equation, using this formula. So you can see that uh, for the start, the gradient of the graph du, the d phi dr is actually a positive value. So if you put a negative value to it, it will end up as a value that is a negative value. But what is more critical is that the gradient of du dr keeps dropping until it becomes zero here. So the value of your gravitational field strength will now decrease, will now tends towards zero. And here, the gravitational field strength become positive because the gradient of the gravitational potential versus the R graph has now turned negative. If you turn negative, because negative of a negative gradient is a positive value. So the gravitational field strength becomes a positive value. And it is the steepest at this point here. Finally, we can now illustrate to you why the change in gravitational potential mg is equal to mgh. So let's take a look at an example. Say you have to move an object from position A to position B. So in this case, the height would have increased. So in this case, the vertical height would have increased by h which means the change in gravitational potential energy should end up as mgh. Let's use the formula for gravitational potential energy and gravitational attraction force to derive this. So we start off by looking at ub, the gravitational potential energy at point b, which is this value. So it's r plus h. Then the gravitational potential energy at point a. Then we know that the mg is actually the uh, uh, mg, g is acceleration due to gravity, so we can work out that g is equal to gm over r squared. 
So in terms of the change of the potential energy, we'll be taking the U, we'll be taking UB minus by UA. So it's UB minus by UA. And mathematically, if you actually work through the math, you will end up with this expression. And you can also thereafter conclude to say that if you expect, you expect that the radius, you expect that R to be much larger than H. The reason is because the radius of Earth is about 6,000 kilometers. And therefore, it is a fair assumption for us to say that R is by and large much larger than your H. If that is the case, then R plus H can be approximated as R. And from here, we can, we can actually pair this down to let it be H R squared. By arranging GM over R squared as an expression, we know that the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to MGH.